This episode I'm going to create a 3D printed robot using Tinkercad for the design and the electronics. I'll show you it all right here at Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Support us at Patreon and you get special access to ChepClub.com. I've been thinking about combining electronics and 3D printing and making an autonomous robot. This one from Parallax is used in a lot of schools, so I thought maybe I could make this educational. So this inspired me to design my own. Here's what I designed in Tinkercad. I used various parts that I found throughout Tinkercad and then put this together, plus a lot of modifications. It's got slots for servos on the sides, the top, holes for an Arduino, and a little ball that goes in the front. But here it is fully assembled so you can see what it's going to look like. I found a lot of these pieces available in the free area of Tinkercad. I got a servos on both sides. I designed these custom wheels. I've got a servo on top with a sharp sensor that'll scan back and forth for obstacle detection. I've got an Arduino R3 on top, although I'd like to do my own custom electronics. On the bottom, I have the ball that I did find on Tinkercad, and it's just got a pin going through it so this can roll. I've also planned some sensors that I can monitor the wheel, these holes in the wheel. I designed this wheel to go right by the sensor infrared detector so I can count pulses and determine how far to go forward and back. This block here will represent sensors and possibly a line follower on the bottom. And then I've got some AA battery designed in for the servos and a 9 volt battery compartment underneath for electronics. So that's the overall plan, but I'm going to do something real simple, just get this thing driving to start. So here it is printed at a 0.3 layer height on my CR10 Mini. I did use supports in the holes for the servos. So I popped out those supports and this is really came out quite nice for a 0.3 layer height. I just used some PLA plastic. Then I installed some standoffs that I just screwed in from the bottom into the holes for the Arduino. And then I put a screw through the ball and just tighten this thing up. I'm going to have to list all these parts at some point, but right now I'm just kind of throwing it together. So then I use some uh, metric screws to tighten up these servos, and they fit pretty nicely. Actually, I got the dimensions just about perfect. you got to angle the servo here, and these are parallax servos, the same ones using that robot. I really like them. And it pops in and holds in place, and then I just use a screw and nut at the four locations and screwed it into the holes that I had designed into the wall. The Arduino pops over those posts that I put in place earlier, just slides on, and then there's two nuts that I put at the back of this thing, and there's plenty of room for those nuts. But the front two, there's not enough room for nuts. So one of them I had to flip over and put a nut on the bottom so it had to screw in from the top. So I just put a screw and that fit into this board. The other hole was basically hopeless, so it just stayed as a locating post. So I got three in place, that should be good. For power, instead of a 9-volt battery, I used this 9-volt battery shield that I created. And this was a Kickstarter many years ago that I did, successful Kickstarter. And that'll power the electronics. Then I have this DF Robot uh, screw shield that has some terminals for servos. So I plugged in the left and right servos into pin 9 and 10. And power for the servos comes from four AA batteries. Now the connector wouldn't fit in the little hole. I'm going to have to make that bigger, so I just shoved it through the top servo, which I'm not going to use right away. And then I just used some double-sided sticky tape to hold this in place. So I just put it in place and squished it down. So there's no 9-volt bat battery because that's a shield, but I want separate power for the motors and the electronics. Now these wheels are not the 3D printed design wheels. These are ones that I had. I want to just get this thing working first, so I want to get some code running. So I just use these for now. And then the last step is just connect power from the four AA batteries into the shield for the servos. So that's the assembly. It's done, and this is actually the front of it. So I need to do more work down the road and make that look prettier. But now it's time to do the code. So I go back to Tinkercad, Tinkercad circuits, and here's the servo bot design that I made. It's got two servos and an Uno connected to 9 and 10 here, like you see, and then power and ground. That's the full circuit. Now, I like to code in actually text mode, not the block mode. I just find this is much easier for me. So I included the servo library with the servo.h. I made a couple variables, defined the two left and right 
servo names, and then the connections to pin 9 and 10. Then I made a series of functions, one that stops the robot. And by doing that, if you send a 1500 millisecond pulse, or 1.5 millisecond, 1500 microsecond pulse, to both of them, they, they stall, because these are continuous rotation. A 1300 drives it one way, a 1700 drives the other way, so that's how I do a forward and reverse. Then I do two 17s for a right and two 13s for a left. And I control how long it is by this variable move. So in the main program, all I have to do is call those functions. So I'm going to call stop here with a 1000. A 1000 gets put into move, and it's going to stop for one second, basically. And then it's going to go forward for two seconds, left for 700 milliseconds, forward for two seconds and just goes back and forth and this is going to draw a square or drive in a square and then it's going to do it again but everything in reverse. The Tinkercad circuits lets you simulate the operation which is really cool but now these aren't continuous rotation servos these are standard servos so when they're flat to each other that's when it stopped and then when they're both turning in opposite directions that means it's going forward or reverse when they're going in the same direction then that means they're turning. So that's how I can tell that my code is working. Now the next step I could do is run it in debug mode, which is another feature in Tinkercad. Now I can set a breakpoint here with these little blocks, so it's going to stop at each of those lines and let me control it. So it's going to stop, you can see they're both in line, and the robot, I'm going to show you how the robot should operate, it's stopped, and then it runs the forward command, and it does that, then it does a left turn, and I'm clicking the butt arrow over here to continue. So I'm just stepping through the program and then I'm showing you what the robot should do based on these commands. So it's drawing the box and then turning and driving and turning and driving. So it's completed the box. Now it's going to stop for a second and then it's going to go in reverse. So it goes reverse and then it's going to turn right and then it's going to go reverse for two seconds and then it's going to turn right and then do that until it gets back to where it started hopefully. And here it goes to the final movement, and it drives back to where it started. Now you can see it's not exactly where it started, and the turns weren't perfect, but it's close enough uh, for this, so I'm going to copy and paste this into the actual Arduino IDE so I can program the robot and see if this will do exactly what I want it to do. So I plugged in the cable from the computer into the Arduino and clicked Upload, and it uploaded the code. And here it is in full motion, driving itself, just like I showed in the debug. But basically, this is at full speed here. And then it does reverse and comes back. So what I want to do now is improve its accuracy of its turns and its movement. So the next step in this robot is to get the sensor working. The infrared detector here that actually shines through these holes that are in the wheels I designed. And so I've got to improve the wheel a little bit, but you can see if I make this a hole, let me make it into a hole here. You can see that the sensor, the center to sensor lines right up at these holes. So I can count pulses by counting when there's a hole or no hole and determine how much to turn or how much to go straight. So this should make the robot a lot more accurate. This is a work in progress, so I'm not ready to release anything, although I am sharing all the files with the bronze, silver, and gold members of ChepClub.com, so they can build along with me, give me some feedback. So if you want to do that, join us at Chep Club. And the winner from the last video for the Chep Protopasta Candy Apple Metal Flake Red Filament is Keith Applegarth. So Keith, congratulations. Go to my YouTube channel about page. My email is there, chuckatlproducts.com. Send me your address and I'll ship it out to you. So if you like this type of project, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up over here. I'll let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon, get you into Chep Club. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. So that's it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.